first of all, thank you to the fans. I mean, what a what a turnout by the fans. Um, I think that kept us in the game through the second half. And uh, yeah, not all evenings are going to be picture perfect and not all evenings are going to be, you know, successful in the eyes of how we imagine things. But, you know, what I love about this group is the is the fire and, and the fight to get back into something, right? Um, I see a lot of hungry guys sitting on the sidelines. I see um, a team who's committed to go to the end. So, yeah, while it wasn't pretty, it wasn't the best day at the office, good teams find a way to get a point and a result. Um, you know, we could have, uh, you know, maybe made it all three at the end there. So, um, yeah, credit to the boys for staying in it and fighting through it. And, uh, yeah, we move on to uh, Tuesday's game. It's a big game in Houston. And, uh, yeah, we have to be best prepared. So, yeah, we'll just have to do a bit of uh, monitoring who's fit, who's available, and uh, move on from there. Thank you, John. Thanks, Coach. I will up to questions. Tom? Uh, speaking of that, uh, how's Tim? And we talk about depth on this team, but certainly the your defensively, your depth was put to a test there tonight <laughs> yeah. on the back yeah. line. Just talk about how that progressed. Yeah, for sure. Time. I mean, listen, we we had to think quick on our feet um, and just come up with a situation that, you know, we weren't sure of the fitness of Joachim to go through a full uh, 90 because of uh, – Obviously, he's uh, uh, paperwork um, in Sweden. So, you know, he missed two weeks of preseason. Edu Löwen, the same. Um, so we had to go to precautionary measure, measures at the end there and, uh, you know, throw in Jake as an extra center back and, and uh, kind of restructure our game plan. Um, and again, through that, we get our way into the, into the game and, and we score the goal to, to equalize. So, you know, credit to, to the guys for adopting that and uh, uh, guys to be fluid and flexible in, in the moment. So, yeah, now we just have to evaluate Tim's. I think he's going to be okay uh, without chatting to our doctor. Um, Tim knows his body really well. Um, and he said he just uh, felt a very tight muscle. So, you know, hopefully there's nothing broken there. And look, it's scary with Josh there going down twice. Yeah, I mean, Josh is committed in everything we do. Um, and you can see that. He took a head knock, and the very first challenge he comes out, he he risks his body yet again and sticks his head out there. So, you know, um, I'm glad he got through the game. Obviously, he'll have to be evaluated and, and monitored over the next 24 hours. and um, But hopefully he's okay again uh, and good to go. And then you get Jake Nerwinski with, like, the play of the game there, Saving a goal in the last in the last minute. Yeah, listen, we, we, we were upset the way we gave up a goal, right? So, yeah, um, and we thought we had many good looks and, and gained some form of momentum through that second half. And all of a sudden, they're standing, you know, three guys in our box and, and uh, guys, you know, salvaging something uh, on the goal line. So, you know, we're going to have to look at that and, and see the film. But uh, for sure, that was, a, that was a bad moment to give away. And, and we'll ever evaluate that and have a look. But um like I said, credit to the guys for staying in it. Daniel. Coach, an impressive individual effort from Sam to score that goal. We've seen him do it before, but in that moment when the team needed a spark, can you speak to his performance? Yeah, very good. I mean, I've had good conversations with Sam and Klaus um, and, and just said sometimes we might the game might need two strikers. Sometimes it might need just one, right? So, And whether that's Sam or Klaus, um, both, both players are prepared to do whatever the team needs. Um, and you could see Sam's willingness, his energy just to change something, to spark something. And that was, you know, lacking on the night. Um, I thought as a group, we let ourselves down with our, some of our intensity, right? So if we were a little bit late to certain challenges, then we just sort of start running more. Uh, we became a bit too stretched in, in the first half. We weren't as compact as we should have been. Um, yeah. And then you have to start now making measures in, in the second half and, you know, hoping guys can get to certain minutes and, and then you make changes and hope to change the complexion of the game. And I think that's what we did. You mentioned lack of sharpness. Is is that just early season trying to work your way into the I said, season? I don't know if I said sharpness. I said intensity. So, you know, um, if we lack that in our game model, then we're pretty much nothing. All right. Um, and if we can't get around guys who are, you know, pretty talented on the ball, we thrive in these moments um, if, if we're up for the challenge. And uh, I thought for, for a lot of the game that we were second best. Um, and we know this team. <laughs> so it's a better result here than we got a year ago um, against them. So, you know, we look at the positive side. It's a, it's a tough group to play against. And, uh, you know, it's a tough coach to play against. Um, yeah, so we know them pretty well. And, uh, yeah, we take this point away. And uh, we see this as a, as a good point.
uh, going back there to the to the defensive decisions, what with especially with with Josh getting you know nicked up the second time, and I know you you know you had Jake uh, you know warming up on the sideline. Was there a thought process of staying with a back four and, and putting Jake in at center back? Did you just not want to have him be you know what just one of two center backs? Can you just kind of walk us through the thought process there in the moment. Yeah, it's a good question, Matt. You know, we spoke about the fitness of Joachim, so putting somebody out there and not getting you know, a Thomas Totland out of the game who could have co continued or what have you. So we just try to plug the Band-Aid and see how it was with Joachim. And if Joachim couldn't go, then at least we could slip into a back four with Jake as the extra center back. So, you know, that was the thought process uh, if we had to pull the plug earlier on uh, Joachim. Uh, but credit to him, he fought through it. He felt okay. And uh, he really, you know, got through the game, you know, with flying colors. I thought he put a, a good performance out there. Um, you know, he won a lot of duels against the tricky Gomez. Um, he's never easy to come up against. Um, but yeah, we we know what we have with, with Joachim. And uh, yeah, we're just trying to get guys along. And you say it's the, the rust is still there. I mean, you see a lot of teams you know, uh, through the game day, uh, what type of performances or what type of score lines there are and how the balances are, you know, it's really 50, 50 games right now. So early on, so things are tight. Uh, just, can I get one more? Uh, um, you were talking about the intensity. A, you didn't really, I didn't, didn't seem like you asked AZ to range as far from his, you know, he started on the left and he, on Tuesday night, he was ranging all the way over the right consistently. It seemed like AZ was a little bit more restricted in his movement tonight. Was that just a, a game plan thing or, or, or what? Yeah, I mean, AZ played underneath Klaus today, um, so he was a central 10. So, yeah, I mean, he has flexibility to move within, you know, the red zones, we call them. Um, but, yeah, AZ found some spots. We just couldn't get the next one off, right? We just couldn't get that next pass, and that often broke down, and uh, we had some transitions going the other way. Uh, very cheap giveaways, and, um, yeah, the boys were disappointed at halftime. Um, they they know we could do better, Um and we showed them some really good moments of the first half where we just, if we just calm down and play through the lines and play through the pressure, you know, then we can have really dangerous moments. Um, I just thought we were very cheap tonight with the ball and we gave it away a lot. Coach, you mentioned Tottenham there briefly a little while ago. Um, other than that, you know, scary turnover in your midfield. These last couple of games have been pretty solid. You know, what do you have to say about his impressive adjustments so far so early into the season? Yeah, listen, he's played at a high level. I mean, you know, we recruited him for a reason. We signed him for a reason. We know what he can bring. Um, that it's going to be such a good fit so quickly. Um, credit to the teammates he has around him, you know, uh, just to get him on board and just to get him acclimated. And uh, he's a good player. He's integrated really well with the team. Um, sometimes some players, you know, uh, from overseas take a little bit longer. Um, he hit the ground running. He came in fit. He came in sharp. He came in with a point to prove. Um, and credit to him, he's been pushed by Jake all the time. So Jake's an honest customer. You know, he gives everything every single day. Um, so we have good depth at that position. Coach, uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, just like you said, you mentioned there's a lot of intensity in these type of games. How's the team feeling uh, to face Two, com uh, two competitive uh, championships like the CONCACAF Champions Cup and now the, the MLS. How's the team feeling physically, but overall mentally? Yeah, I see this as a privilege. You know, we put ourselves into the situation and we should enjoy these moments and we should celebrate it, right? So um, having to deal with two cup competitions and four games in 12 days or 11 days, it's uh, never easy to mitigate and navigate through. Um, but uh, four days, you know, Tuesday to Saturday, we should have no problem, you know, with this stretch now. But now coming up, is it's going to be a question. So, you know, we made some roster changes tonight and we had some uh, different bodies out there. Um, and part of that was to to navigate through the next couple of days. Yeah, so um, we, we feel we can compete with our whole roster. We feel we can, you know, win games with our whole roster. And I think we showed that in parts tonight as well, that we can compete to the very end uh, with just about anybody that's, that's uh, left on our roster and, you know, starting games or coming off the bench. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, nice. Ashley Fry here. Um, first off, great match tonight. Now, you have been here in St. Louis for about a season now, and now starting your second season. How has your experience been here coaching in St. Louis compared to the teams that you have been at in the past? Yeah, I just think the environment that we're in. Um, you know, St. Louis has a proud soccer history, and uh, yeah, we we are driven by the community, um, and, and they drive us every single day. Um, yeah, we want to bring out a product to St. Louis that uh, people feel proud of, and I think uh, in the short span that we've been here, 
you know, I don't think that I've been here one year. I, you know, even when I wasn't working as an official coach as from day one in the MLS, um, I spent a year, we spent a year behind the scenes building out the foundations and the structure and building culture. Uh, we believe strongly in culture around here. We push each other every single day um, and we set the bar very high for each other. So, um, you know, we think that city deserves us. Uh, we think that uh, the fans deserve that. And you can see how they come out and support us game in and game out. Um, so the very least we can do is empty the tank for them. Thank you, Coach Bradley. Thank you. Justin. Coach, I wanted to circle back around Indiana Vasilev. On Tuesday, he gets a little bit banged up, but he's back in training right away. Him and Sam come off the bench today to provide that spark in the game. And what does it mean for you to have a player like that and like Sam too on the bench itching to get in and she can make a difference? Yeah, I mean, from a year ago where we had no depth or, or MLS next pro players on our roster to all of a sudden now, those same players have given us depth and given us quality and, and uh, driven competition internally and, and uh, pushed results externally. So, you know, I'm proud of these guys. Um, these guys are my go-to every single day. I'm not talking about Sam and, and um, Indy. I'm just talking about the whole roster. You know, th these guys give me purpose every day because I see what they do for each other. I see how they push each other. Um, and like I say, even when days don't go your way, not every day can go your way, but you can fight. You know, you can fight to get a result, and I, I see that's what they did. And um, Indy's a good character to be around the team. We got time for one more. Tom, if you want to wrap it up. Was Hebert unavailable today? What was Kyle's? Yeah, Hebert's unavailable uh, probably for 10 days, and then we'll reevaluate after that. Okay. Coach, thank, thank you for joining us. Thank you, John. Time. Appreciate it. Good night. Relax. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, not up for today's game. I didn't think so. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about the game today. You guys had some tough times on uh, both ends of the field, but you know, defensively, and obviously a lot of scrambling yeah. out there. How was it? Yeah, I think we we let we let them control the game, and then I think we didn't uh, uh, take uh, take us the, the second balls. Uh, we are losing too much uh, too much balls, especially in the midfield. So I think, yeah, we let them control the game. And then we, we wake up uh, late when we went one nil down. And then we're able to, to get the equalizing goal. Would you have any idea why that, what was missing today? Why, why, you know? Yeah, I think if we, we control the game a bit more, especially in the midfield, I think we, we are going to create a lot of chances. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to be able to, to win the game today. Yeah. And how'd you like your time playing center back there when Josh was out? Sorry? Did you get you had some time playing center center back there when Josh was hurt? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used I used to play center back back home. So I'm kind of familiar with the with the position. Mm -hmm. Jabs, what kind of a difference does it make when you lose a player like Tim Parker so early in the game? Yeah, I mean you know, we all know Tim is he has uh, experience, especially defensively. And uh, I think it helps, it helps us a lot, especially on set pieces. So, yeah, I think we, we knew that, like, we, we needed to, like, uh, up our game a bit more because uh, when team is there at the back, it makes things easy for us, especially me and Edu in the midfield. Jabalu, you were having some good battles in the midfield. Do you like these type of games where you have to – you know, be into it and be really aggressive with your defending. Yeah, I think yeah, I think uh, it's uh, it's part of part of my job, like to help the team defend and to to be to be feisty there in the midfield. So yeah, I kind of enjoy doing that a lot. You kind of used to the cold weather yet? No, 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 <laughs> not yet. <laughs> How bad was it out there for you? I mean, because I was running, it wasn't that bad. Because I was I was running, so yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't that bad today. Uh, jo jobs to say at these early games where you have games kind of back, you know, back to back with the Concacaf Champions Cup. Do you think, you know, the intensity kind of varies from game to game? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it, it depends on the kind of team we play. Like we know we're playing Houston. They have like a slow build up, so they're a bit more tactical. Like today's game, it was a bit of like back and forth, back and forth. But I think we have a good depth within the team to like um, go through the, the whole season with uh, a lot of games that we have.
One more. Another game on Tuesday. Can you handle that? Can you could you play again on Tuesday after playing tonight? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely I can. But obviously, with the help of my teammates, as I said, we we have a lot of depth within the team. So it's uh it's uh, it's really up to the coach what he he wants to do. How does it feel going in, coming in to the second half of the of that series? You have a one goal lead. How big a deal is this for you guys? Please, please repeat the question. The, the with for the Concacaf game on Tuesday, you guys come into that with a one goal lead. Um, just how big a deal is this for you guys to would it be to advance? Yeah, I think we knew that we needed to win the game, especially here at home, because we still have to go play at uh, at Houston just to gain the momentum uh, for our game on Tuesday. So. I think it was very important for us to to get uh, to get the points here at home, uh, just to get the momentum and go finish it at uh, Houston. Okay. Jobs, thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you, Kasmi. Thank you. Hey, do. Hey. Uh, how? What was it like out there tonight? And what did you have to do to? What did you guys have to do to get back in this game? Um. Yeah, honestly, I don't know if we really found a way to come back uh, in that game because I think, honestly, that, that we played a really bad game. We um, just couldn't get the second balls. We couldn't win the second balls. We were always a step late. Um, we we couldn't secure, um, yeah, the first balls. We lost a lot of balls, had a lot of mistakes. So I think that wasn't a great game. But uh, in the end of the day, um it's a good point. It's a good point for us, and uh, you have to be able uh, to still to still get a result out of that. So I think I think that's a good point, and and we take that, and uh, yeah, we we focus on the next game. Looks like you got that pass to Sam right where it needed to be. For the goal. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a decent pass, but I think Sam still had a, had to create a lot out of that, and I think he like the most of the credit belongs to him because like. What he did out of that was was incredible with his pace, with his with his body, went past the defender. So I think um, that was that was a great uh, action from Sam. And when, you, when, you, when you're not having the best game out there, does do you, do you just have to have a short memory and not be thinking about any other pass before you you know you take that that chance to send that pass to Sam? Does it affect your mindset at all? You know the the ten fifteen passes you tried before that killer one. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, for me also, um, it, it wasn't a really good game for me. Um, I also uh, lost a lot of balls, which is unusual for me, I think. Um, I couldn't secure as many balls. And um, yeah, but in that moment, um, as I said, uh, it's good. Like when, when you have a moment like that and then Sam makes something really good of, good out of that and uh, in the end of the day, you, you still get a point out of that. I think that's that's still good, and um, you got to be able sometimes to execute even if, when you play a bad game, and even then getting a point. Um, so I think in the end of the day, like we have so many games this year, and there are going to be more games like this, unfortunately. But uh, you have to be able to still get something out of it. Sorry. Edu, you missed a little bit of the preseason uh, because you were in Germany. Uh, today you started, played 80 minutes. Uh, how did you feel out there? Yeah, I felt I felt all right. It didn't it didn't feel bad or something. Um, I, I was happy that the coach uh, actually let me play a little bit longer because the plan was like I don't know 50 to 60, but uh, then uh, ended up playing I don't know around 80, which was good for me, and uh, I'm definitely happy about that. But uh, obviously. I will need a I will need a couple couple games to to get back into it again into the rhythm and um, body wise fitness wise as well. Um, but uh, I think I think it was still a, a good first step uh, as a yeah as a starter. <clears throat> Edu, with an incredible uh, first season for the San Luis SC, uh, what are the teammates? Uh, what are you guys' uh, thoughts about this uh, upcoming season? What are the expectations for the team? Yeah, honestly, um, the last season was incredible, was great, but we are trying not to think about it as much because like in the end of the day, last season is last season and we have another season now and um, we have to show that one more time and um, 
yeah everybody forgets like it's it's in the history books for sure but like in the end of the day it's uh this season and we 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 got to play a, a good season now and that's what we are focused on and we are not like um setting a lot of goals now like we want to uh we want to achieve this we want to achieve that like we are trying to go from game to game now we have uh on tuesday we have houston coming up obviously we want to we want to go to the next round of the champions cup and make it as far as possible um because it's a great tournament it's great for the club and um it's just uh, a very nice experience to play in the champions cup and um yeah after that game we go uh we go again at home versus new york city and then like the next game and the next game like we we are trying to to focus on uh, game to game and not like set too many goals uh, already now because the season is so long thank you considering where you are in your season and <clears throat> would it be tough for you to play again on tuesday um yeah definitely it would be tough but uh, i don't know what what the coach uh, plans is planning uh he will he will know uh what the best is for me what the best is for the team and uh i'm i'm trying to trust him in that and as i said already like we we have a lot of a lot of games coming up um so we'll see uh what his plans are because you always like to play you always want to be out there right? yes yes i do this is one of those things that you've learned from last season is maybe you know, whether pacing yourself or taking breaks and yeah yeah definitely uh that's something i i need to grow and i want to grow in for sure to to trust the the coaches in that as well and to have like more of a communication and not only uh seeing my side of being willing to play every single game and every single minute so um yeah i'll definitely have a uh discussion about that with the coach and see what he's coming up uh yeah and then and then we'll see Thank you, guys. Appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Sam, we we keep we keep talking to you. We yeah. keep seeing you all the time. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's a good thing from your point of view. Hopefully, yeah. yeah hopefully for good um, things. And he was saying that you get all the credit on that goal. Yes, he put the pass there, but you had to do so much with it. Just kind of run us through what went went on after you got the ball there. Um. Yeah. You know, I give credit to Edu because every single time, um, every single time I make a run forward. I know Edu sees me, so, you know, and he always puts it in a in a great spot. Yeah, I had to do some work, but at the end of the day, you know, I needed Edu to put that ball in there for me to get onto it. And then, yeah, from that, it was uh, yeah, just trying to get past the defender. He's a strong defender, quick as well. So, yeah, just trying to get past him and then, yeah. You had the room to be able to get the ball on your left foot for the – for the shot you have to feel good when you get in that situation definitely definitely yeah of course every player wants to get the ball on their strong foot so so yeah what was <clears throat> what was the key the what did you see as you sat on the bench that wasn't working for you guys early parts of this game um i think um i think salt lake is a is a good team and they were putting a lot of pressure on us and we didn't really have an outlet as much to 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 go forward and I feel like Klaus a lot of the times was alone up there like you know he just didn't really have as many um people around him a lot of the times and that's I mean obviously credit to Salt Lake for defending well as well but you know um I think that running in behind and stuff like that is what kind of helped to to alleviate some of the pressure because they were just kind of just pushing it down a lot so Salt Lake I mean they were kind of just pushing it down a lot so I mean yeah just having that outlet and being able to to get in behind them was very important I think first off great goal tonight I just want to ask what challenges in tonight's match was a positive learning moment that you can take and include in your next match yeah I would definitely say like I was saying to, to Tom I would definitely say um being able to use those outlets you know, any single time we have the opportunity to do so is important. And um, obviously, you know, I think the, I think one of the great things that I love about our team is that we always fight, you know, whether we're one nil down or three nil down, we're going to keep on fighting. So I would definitely say it's not really a learning moment for us, but I definitely say that it's something that um, I look at as a positive is that we always keep fighting. You know, we always keep fighting for the fans, keep fighting for the organization, you know, so, so being able to, continue to fight even when you're down is what's most important because you're going to find yourself down in this league a lot 
So, you know, cause they're just good teams in this league. So, so yeah, I just keep, I think keeping that, uh, that mentality and keeping that focus on that is very important. No problem. Sam, congrats on the, on the game and on your goal, of course, uh, with you and Klaus, both great strikers, great forwards, personally for you, how do you feel playing with, uh, with two forwards or two strikers or just with one target on top? I think obviously there are advantages to both, you know, but obviously, yeah, I enjoy playing with Klaus. I mean, you know, he makes life a lot easier for me on the field, you know, because just him being so big and being strong and also being good with his feet, you know, he's able to hold the ball up, you know, and, and see things sometimes that I'm not able to see when I'm holding the ball up, you know? So I think it's, um, I think, yeah, to play with two strikers is very important in my, in my opinion, I, I like playing with two strikers, but also playing with one striker is, it is good as well, especially if you have someone like AZ or, or Nook V, you know, under you to be able to help you, you know, but Overall, I think it's more so just a thing of the, the team's mentality when we're playing. So it's not necessarily about the tactic, but more so just how we go into the game, because I think whatever formation we play in, we're able to beat any team. So do you feel more, more comfortable being just by yourself in the area or just are also going to the sidelines uh, to play I wide think, a little bit? Yeah, I think honestly, honestly, I feel comfortable in both ways. I feel comfortable having Klaus there with me. You know, I also feel comfortable alone, but I definitely would say that having someone like Klaus who, you know, can score a lot of goals in this league with you is a danger for any team. You know, when a team sees me and Klaus on the field, it scares them, you know? So I think that's very, it's a, it's a good weapon to have, you know? So. Thank you, Sam. Joey. Sam, I know it's, you know, really early in the season. So, but I was wondering if you've had time, you know, personally to reflect on your journey and how you got here, you know, last season, you were kind of a player, a lot, not a lot of fans expected to be on the field a lot. Now this year starting, You started the very first match in the season, CONCACAF tournament, first game MLS of the MLS season. You score a goal. You know, I just want to know, have you had time to, you know, think about that journey, how you got to this point yet? Um, Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've been around a lot of um, different places. And, um, yeah, you know, at times I um, kind of just sit in my bed and I kind of just, like, talk to God. And I'm kind of just, you know, thanking him for putting me in this position. You know, because, um, yeah, five, six years ago, I was playing in the lower levels in, in Europe and I didn't really see myself, you know, being here. Obviously, I, I, I knew that I could. I knew that I had the talent and the ability to do so. But, you know, I um, just didn't have the opportunity. But, um, yeah, you know, I just thank God that he's put me in this position to be able to have this opportunity. And, you know, obviously to the organization and to the staff. I mean, it's, it's a blessing, you know, and it's a dream come true. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Certainly hard to follow that up. Sake, some of the issues you guys have to hash out, I'm sure you guys won't be clouded by that, but the difference between coming out with zero points versus one point for a locker room, just how significant was your goal in this draw? Um, Very, very significant. Obviously, you know, you never want to leave a game with zero points, no matter what, you know, no matter how bad or good you played, you know, you never want to leave a game with, with zero points. So I think getting a point, you know, against a tough opponent is, is very important. You know, um, momentum is a big thing in this league, you know, and it's also a big thing in the, in the CONCACAF championship, obviously it's, it's a, it's a big thing in any league, you know? So, so I think when you have that momentum of not losing, it helps you, you know, it helps you to move forward. So I think getting a point against this team is going to help us moving on to, to Houston as well, you know, because that's a game that we can't afford to lose. So, you know, we, um, you know, it helps us going forward so yeah uh on on that goal what was there explain when you guys switched the, the three back men the flanks you guys were attacking the flanks great mark and and totland were doing incredible and then you had two big possessions i know you had one where you tried to get down on vera on on that right flank uh just a couple possessions before you eventually score the goal was it were you making a point to attack the, from the flanking position more in that game or, or does that go back to maybe that the outlet thing you were talking about a little bit earlier? Um, yeah, I think that um, at that time we were playing with two strikers. So Celio had the left side covered and obviously Celio is very quick as well. So I knew he would cover that side. So I kind of just look for the open spot that I can get to. And I'm kind of just, when I play, I'm kind of just like, if I can just get the ball at my feet, then I think the rest will work itself out. I'm just trying to get the ball into positions that I like and, and, you know, being able to attack the defenders and in positions that are hard for them, because I think it's very hard for a defender to have to turn 
and keep up with me down the flank and then have to keep up with me also cutting inside, so. Looking forward to going down to Houston. You missed the game there last year. Did it probably bother you? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, being able to go back and, and play in Houston is like a dream come true, you know. Um, I never played for the academy in Houston, but I went to a lot of Dynamo games. And so um, probably going to have a lot of family and friends there. So it's going to definitely be like a homecoming for me. So Is that where most of your family still is? Yeah, yeah, all, almost. Yeah, pretty much all of my family, except for my oldest brother is still in Houston. But other than that, my cousins, aunties, uncles, everyone's everyone's in Houston. So it's going to be a packed stadium, hopefully for me. Hopefully. So, yeah. Have you ever played in that stadium? No. Never played in that stadium. I heard it. It's a beautiful stadium. Like, in this is amazing there. So, I mean, it's going to be nice to, you know, see the stadiums. Um, obviously, no stadium is as good as our stadium, you know, but, yeah. but, yeah, but, but yeah, I mean, it's going to, it's going to be nice to, to be able to be in my hometown and play in front of my family. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Dog with I'm so glad. Dog with a bone. I'm so glad they meet your threshold of comfortability. I'm looking out for. Them. I know I you want are. Them to be... So if you were looking out for, them, you want to stand outside of the cave as opposed to sitting in a chair. Who are you really looking out for? Well, well, ultimately, ultimately. I'm looking out for me. Of course. But, Perfect timing. Yoki, thank you for joining us. Hello. Uh, How do you feel out there? Your first time out? And yeah, it's been a while since I played 90, so it was um, fun to be back. Fun to play at City Park again. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm happy with that, playing 90 minutes again. <laughs> Were you concerned about being able to do 90 tonight? No, nah, I, I mean, it's it's hard to tell. I mean, I've been, uh, as you know, uh, going back to Sweden for the for the, for the the green card process. Uh, I missed a few games, uh, which I, I, I wanted to have, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, I had to do this at this point. Uh, uh, but I've been training well uh, in Sweden. I got what is it one and a half week here right now also. So I've been start, uh, trying to stay fit. And uh, I felt strong out there. Uh, obviously, it was a, a hard fight. Um, but um, uh, no doubt that I, I was able to con complete the game. What was it like back there? Tim goes out early. Josh gets knocked in the face a couple times and is out. There's a lot of moving parts there on the back line tonight yeah you don't want that for for, for anyone no, if, even if it's a goalkeeper center back or, or or a striker but obviously you you, you don't want I, I was i was a little bit concerned when when josh especially when he got his second hit uh, on his head uh, um yeah unlucky uh, and and tim had to be cautious with it, with what now he had. So um, obviously we want Tim uh, as always on the, on the field with us. But um, yeah, we had to do this this way this time. Oh, Julian, Joaquin, was this kind of the kind of game you're expecting out of RSL? Kind of hectic, kind of chaotic, and all over the place. Yeah, uh, I think we. All of us saw, saw the first game um, where, where they played two different halves. But you see this is a team with a lot of qualities on the ball, the one, two passes uh, moving, uh, which which we know knew about. But today was also a, a battle out there. It was uh, physical. Um, and uh, yeah, we were prepared for that. But I, I think 
uh, as as we all saw today that um, we could do better in in that sense, like uh, the, the physical part. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a good opponent, absolutely. Joachim, uh, this was your your first game after you came back from Sweden. Uh, was the plan to have you play ninety minutes, or was it more circumstances of the game because a uh, team had to go out? No, I talked with coach before before the game, and we we said we had to. I had to to see where where I was because it's it's always hard to tell. I mean, one time uh, it's one thing to train and one thing to to play games, uh, especially on this level. Uh, but I, I also told him that I'm I'm confident. And I'm I've been feeling in, that I'm in a good shape. Um, but I I knew that. We had Yoshiara as a back backup before before the game. Now we had to go in earlier, so things changed absolutely. Uh, but I'm I'm happy that I get 90 minutes a day, and because uh, that's what I uh, I want to play 90 minutes every game. So uh, uh, it was a good start. Yeah. Okay, we talked a little bit about you know, Yaro and Tin. How hard is it to stay organized when you have those pieces moving in and out, but then at the end of the game, you're going to a back three? Does it kind of come easy since you've been working on that in training, or does it take some to getting used to at the start of the season? No, I think we we know our ID. Uh, we know our DNA, how we want to play, uh, especially us center backs. We've been playing in trainings in in. Uh, Yeah, games last season, uh, this season for them, uh, and also um, on, on the preseason. Uh, so, so we know how we want to act as center backs within uh, different shapes. Like you said, we went in the five in the back or three in the back in the in the, in the last part of the game. Uh, changed a little bit, but uh, we we've been playing that before, and we 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 know our. Uh, yeah, how to play in, in those different systems, yeah. You dive a little bit into that, and the game seemed to shift positively for the defense when you guys did switch to three center backs, you know, the back five, if you will. Um, can you just kind of go into, to, uh, you know, from your perspective, how the game shifted there? It seemed especially that the wing backs were able to kind of come back and, and crash on, on guys secondarily. It opened up offensively on the flanks. You just go into how that game opened up for you guys there. Yeah, I, I think especially Sam's goal uh, was very important for us to to kind of try to build some some kind of momentum. Uh, I think after his goal, we we were a little bit uh, on our front foot uh, instead of uh, securing the the spaces behind us uh, and and to try to keep as as you said and get the wingers with within the play um, and I think we we got a lot of more pressure in in that last part of the game. Uh, so yeah, that that part worked well, especially after game and after after the after the goal. What's it like there in the 98th minute where they work the ball around and all of a sudden it looks like it's going into the open net and Jake comes flying in to. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember exactly what happened. It felt like we didn't clear the ball probably, uh, and they. Yeah, they they're dangerous in those moments. Pick those balls up and and then um, yeah, huge save from from Jake. Uh, we had to oh, did a corner come out of it or was it? Uh, so yeah, and that that's part of the of of this game. I mean, when you when you try to go forward for a goal and and then these things happen, we had to try to reduce the risk of of getting these uh, chances against us. Uh, but yeah, massive save from from Jake in this. Okay. What was it like all that time in Sweden? You were there like two weeks, basically, right? Just waiting and waiting and waiting for. The yeah, it, it was frustrating, obviously. I mean, the timing was, um, if you can say it, it, it was not the best timing, but it had to be done. I mean, it's it benefits me, it benefits the club. Uh, and uh, But like I told you, I, I missed those four games, which I, I really wanted. Yeah. Uh, Uh, so I, I watched uh, the games from uh, yeah overseas, uh, which was uh, yeah I would rather have played those games, but um, it is what it is. And uh, like I said, I tried to stay as fit as possible over there in cold and snow with Sweden. Yeah, Edu was saying he could do stuff in the gym, but he really couldn't do a lot of stuff on the field with the ball. Was that? Yeah, I mean, I had access to gym. I had access to an indoor hall with turf, so that was good. 
uh, but uh, no, no heating in that indoor hall. So it was basically like like being outside. And in Sweden at the moment, it's maybe around, I was around uh, 20, uh, 20 Fahrenheit. So it was pretty cold. Uh, so, uh, so I would rather have been in uh, uh, in California. Were you in Stockholm or where were you? Uh... First, I did the uh, yeah the the parts that you had to do the interview and the uh, the medicals in, in in Stockholm, and then then we went to our uh, our place in in yeah in the middle part of Sweden before getting the yeah the long wait of getting the the passport back. Yeah. Is this good Swedish weather here today? I mean, the, yeah, this is good Swedish weather, <laughs> like a Swedish summer. No, no, it's, uh, <laughs> but um, that wasn't too bad. You played in stuff like this before. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you.